everyone's in the right spot. This is OneNote for Beginners. I took a quick survey of everyone here you know, after they arrived, and everyone said that they haven't used OneNote yet, which is good. I really targeted this class to be sort of a get your feet wet with OneNote. I'm going to show everyone the interface of the product. Um, and um, you know you can take that knowledge with you and then give it a try on whatever platform you're going to use OneNote on. The challenge with teaching a class like this is that uh, OneNote is on so many different platforms and devices, so which one do I teach on, right? So I made the decision I'm going to be teaching on the Windows version. The reason I'm going to do that is because the Windows version is the all bells and whistles experience. It's got all the features, everything that OneNote has to offer, and as you move down the list, you know, you start getting watered down. You move down to the Mac version, then the tablet version, and then the mobile uh, device version is, you know, the most watered down experience. So I say, if you can use the Windows version, you'll know how to use any of the versions, because all the concepts apply across all the different editions. The buttons may be in a few different places. The ribbon interface may look a little bit different, but, um, once you see and, and, and learn how this works, you can jump into any of the different versions and start using it. And that's what's really great about this product and, and a lot of the way that Microsoft's been doing a lot of the, the apps in their latest uh, Office suite is that you know it's not only Windows anymore, right? It's all kinds of different devices. The Mac owners are not being left out anymore. The iPad owners, the Android people, everyone can use this product. And that's why I really think it's a great tool as opposed to you know how it used to be where only the Windows people could take advantage of it. Now anyone can definitely use it. And there's even an online browser version. So even if you have a 10 year old computer and you only have a web browser, you can use OneNote Online. And I'm gonna show off how the online interface looks as well, and all of these can be interlinked. So, you know, while it can work as a silo product where it only saves on your computer, you can link it up to your OneDrive account. I did a full class on OneDrive a few months ago, so I'm not gonna go too deep into it, but you can sign in with your OneDrive account, save it into your cloud account, uh, only if you want to, and then you can have that access across all your devices. And that's where some of the power of this product really starts to shine because not only are you working on, you know, on your computer like we used to, but now you can access it on your phone, and I'm going to show how that works a little bit later, but the web interface, and also sharing with other people if you want to. That's another big aspect of OneNote that is really easy. Evernote charges for sharing capabilities. OneNote provides that free of charge, so it's a very neat aspect, uh, and we're going to actually try a little bit of sharing together here before the class is over so everyone can see how some of that uh, aspect works. Everyone is signed into their computer, right? Okay. So as long as you're signed in, uh, we're not going to get to that till about three quarters of the way into class. You don't have to worry about it just yet, but I will ask you to go into the web browser. I'm going to put up a link that you can go to, and we're going to go into a notebook together, and we're going to edit a notebook together so everyone can see how the sharing aspect and working with others, um, you know, works with this product. Um, I was expecting my colleague Erica to be here today. Maybe she will show up. Um, she's been working some long hours this week, so I told her she, you know, it was optional for her to show up today. Um, but uh, my name is Derek Lodar, as most of you do know me. I have a lot of familiar faces here in the crowd. Um, we are a local technology consulting company. We handle residential and commercial um, technology support, and we do have a few customers in the crowd, so I appreciate uh, all of you coming on by. Um, you know, while during the work week we, uh, we do our regular day-to-day uh, -day stuff, you know, I like to put on classes like this and show off uh, some of the items and some of the technologies that are out there that we're using, that people are starting to use, customers that we work with, and OneNote I feel is just one more of those, uh, those tools that, that we can leverage. Uh, and like I said, since it's completely free, there's really no excuse not to give it a try, right? I'm not saying everyone's going to like it, you don't have, not everyone has to love it, but give it a try. Um, you know, uh, definitely get your feet wet a little bit with it. You never know. You might start leveraging it on a daily basis or, you know, for some of your needs. Uh, and I'm going to go over some of the different scenarios and use cases that you can use this product for. Um, as again, it's, it's very much a tool like Excel, right? Excel at, at heart is just a spreadsheet program, but people use it to do lists and organize things and do drawings and raffles with it and do all kinds of complex things with it. And OneNote is, is very similar. Uh, in that regard. Does everyone have a copy of the agenda and the cheat sheet? I know you just walked in yeah. uh, and Ruth will, will try and get you one um, as well. 
Uh, and I want to mention, I've got, uh, I know it's going to be a smaller class today. We do have one giveaway bag we're going to be handing out uh, at the end, and you have to submit for the raffle, uh, and we'll get to that before the class is over. Ruth will get everyone a quick sign up. You just drop it in the bucket, and you'll be entered for the raffle. So the chances are pretty good. We've got uh, five people here and one bag, so someone's walking away a happy camper at the end of class. So we'll get to that uh, once, we're, once we're all through here. Um, I already mentioned, you can give us a call. Um, I have one of my cards on the back table. If you need any uh, computer assistance or support um, for first time customers, we, met, we have a library discount that is 10% off uh, labor. Uh, I tend to think we do a pretty good job. We have a very good staff uh, that is personally trained by myself. And um, you know, we're very um, different than the geek squads or the other you know, very corporate firms out there. Uh, we provide a very personal approach to all the service we provide. So uh, you know, definitely keep that in mind if you need any assistance. Some of our upcoming classes, I always like to mention these because uh, a lot of people you know, don't know about all the different events that we put on and classes we put on. We got a pretty packed calendar for the next few months. Um, the, for the second Saturday of every month, um, we put on a open help desk for the community at Park Ridge Library. It says Niles Library. We had our event here about two months ago or so. It was a, a, a decent event. We're going to try to redo that here maybe on a quarterly or half year basis. Um, but we do it every single month at Park Ridge Library. You can bring your light computer questions or tablet questions or uh, how do I do this, how do I do that kind of questions over to the library. And uh, it's always at least one of our staff members plus a whole a slew of library staff members that are there to help and assist with any kind of technology questions that you may have. Um, we are going to be doing our first, we mentioned this a little bit before class started, we're gonna be doing our first class that is gonna be a hybrid. It's gonna be an in-class presentation and we're gonna be having people joining in via webcast live uh, on the same day. So I encourage people that can come to class to please join us in person as can't win prizes when you sit at home in your pajamas, but if you really have to and you really don't feel like coming in, you can sign up for the webcasted version and that will be live streamed. People will be able to ask questions on the fly. You will be able to see everything you see in class. It's just going to be handled over a, a, over a webinar tool. So uh, we're going to be doing that for the first time. There may be some bugs with it, but we're going to give it a try and, and see how it works and hopefully it's something we can offer on a consistent basis. Uh, and that's going to be for our Outlook.com class. Outlook.com is the free email service from Microsoft. Um, it is very comparable to Gmail, but it has no limit on how much email you can store. So it's got unlimited storage, very good spam filter. Um, so we're going to be teaching you know, how that service works, the interface, all the basics around it. Um, also in July, we're going to be at Lincolnwood Library for one of our most popular classes that we put on, our Computer Security for Beginners class. If you've never been to that, it is a very entertaining class, probably the most entertaining that we put on. We do a lot of video demos, a lot of hands-on demonstrations in terms of how to stay safe, what the hackers and all the bad guys are doing out there, and how you can keep your devices and your online presence uh, safe, online banking, email, all that. We're on the front lines helping keeping people safe, and this is the class where we divulge all the stuff we're seeing in the field. So a uh, very popular class. It fills up very early, so do sign up for that uh, very early if you do want to get a seat and, and join us for that. Uh, we will be webcasting that class as well. Uh, and then our, at least on the current calendar, our final class of the summer in August, um, we are going to be doing Android tablets for beginners. That's another popular class. A lot of people are buying Android tablets these days and a lot of people don't know how to use them because it's such a new uh, device to a lot of people. It's a different interface uh, for some of us. So we will be showing off in person live how to work with an Android tablet uh, from interface to installing apps to um, apps that we recommend and all the different things that go into usage uh, of an Android tablet. So that's another popular class, fills up very quickly. So uh, be sure to sign up uh, a seat for yourself if you, if you are interested. Um, I know I hark on this on a, a, in every class. Uh, again, if, if anyone has any computers that are running these dinosaur software programs, Windows XP or the Office version 2003, you should know that they have end of life happen as of April 8th of this year. Uh, it is very dangerous to be running these two pieces of software on your computer. Um, if you've moved off of them, that's very good. If you're still running them, uh, you probably want to make sure that they are disconnected from the internet, not touching uh, an online uh, connection. 
which was because there are a lot of exploits that are coming out in the wild and it's just becoming very dangerous to be running uh, these antiquated systems uh, going forward. So um, if you have any family members or friends that are still running these antiquated pieces of software, do mention to them that it's time to, to definitely move on, whether it's a new PC or a new Mac or, or something else. Uh, you, you know, these, these pieces of software have been on the market now for um, over, over 12 years. So that's all I'll say about that. Okay. So what this class is and what it isn't, okay? I kind of mentioned this uh, a little bit earlier. This class is meant to be a get your feet wet, get familiar with OneNote, how do I use it, how can I you know, get started with it. I'm not gonna go in depth about every single feature. I'm not gonna show every single bell and whistle in the program. It's because most of us in the classroom are beginners still and you guys are just looking towards um, you know, getting familiar with the product and that's exactly what I'm going to do today. So. Uh, I, I really encourage everyone to ask questions as we go along. We have a very small crowd, as is evident here, uh, but that's also good because I, I'd be more than willing to, to get, take interjections and um, you know, any questions that anyone has. Um, I am not a OneNote expert, but I've been using it for quite a few years, so I, I know my way around it pretty decently. Um, there are people out there that likely know quite a bit more about it than I do, but I'm gonna show up all the aspects that I know about, the things that find I find uh, are, are fairly productive for me, um, and maybe there are things that you will find that, uh, that I don't even know about. Um, it's gonna be tough for you to follow along in your computer for most of what we're doing, except for the part where we're gonna actually go into the OneNote online interface, which is the web browser version. Um, if you brought your own device, like a tablet, you can definitely go into OneNote for whatever device you have, if you have an iPad, um, if you have a, um, another kind of tablet or even a mobile phone, there are apps for every single device. So you can go into it, play with it a little bit. I'm not gonna go into exact details about every device, but if you have a particular question about it, I'd be more than glad to, to answer it um, you know, based upon your, your situation, okay? And again, I did hand out a, a cheat sheet guide. This is a guide actually from Microsoft. It's about five pages long. In reality, I only printed out the first two. Um, so if you're interested in that, you can, uh, I will go ahead and I will email Ruth. I'll email you the full five page or six page guide. It has a few more pages to it with some more detailed specifics. Uh, but these are the most important aspects, especially the first page. It goes over all the basics about how the interface works and looks. Um, and again, everything on here is very comparable to what you'll see in the Mac version, the iPad and the tablet version. It's just gonna be a little bit more watered down. So um, you can definitely use this to follow along in all the additions. So, so everyone probably is wondering, what is OneNote? I went a little bit of detail about what OneNote is. Um, OneNote is a product, it's actually been around since 2003. It's been around for over a decade now, but most people don't know about it because it's been one of those products in the Microsoft Office suite um, that just never get a lot of attention. And now it's really starting to become a popular product because of all the touch devices on the Windows side and the iPads out there in that um, you know, finally it's becoming easier to use something like a digital notebook. If you had a regular PC without a touch screen on it, it's, you know, if OneNote works pretty well, you can take notes on it. I'm gonna show how to use text input and crop from a web browser to put stuff into it. So you can do a lot and pull from a lot of different sources when it comes to OneNote, but the best experience definitely comes into play when you have some kind of device where you can either use finger or stylus input. I mean, that is really the bread and butter of why this product was made a decade ago, is to make it easy to transition from one of these paper notebooks into a digital notebook. Um, and it's a very versatile product. The reason I like OneNote so much is that it's not only meant to be a notebook, you know, digital notebook where you can jot down digital notes. It's meant to do a lot of different things. And as I said, in the back of the agenda, I put a lot of those different things. I use it sometimes to do shopping lists for myself. I go out and make a grocery list on here, and then I can go on my phone and I can check off exactly what I'm buying in the store. Um, you can make a fully searchable digital notebook. I'm gonna show off how handwritten notes can be searched within the product. And that is, as far as I know, a Windows only feature um, so far. That's gonna be coming to the other devices uh, as far as I know. Um, Taking notes, obviously that's the, the, the basic premise of it. Task lists you can do within here. Plan projects, I know a lot of customers that use this very heavily to plan projects out and customer uh, situations um, between staffs. Um, you can go ahead, I, I read about people planning their weddings with this product. 
Um, you can take web pages, bring them in as uh, snippets, and you can mark web pages up like as if it was printed out on a sheet of paper, and then you can share that with other people very easily. Um, you can go ahead and record your audio and video from it and Im import that into the, a page, and you can have that um, in there. And I, I, I've even heard you can do searching through that audio, so you can search for snippets. I know of students uh, in my grad school that use it to record what the professors are saying and save that for themselves in parts of their the notebooks. Um, you can do a digital portfolio with it. I have some customers that even use it as a digital um, drawing notebook for themselves. So some of the artists, you can use it as a freeform drawing tool. It's got all the different pens and colors and different width um, pens and, and um, paint brushes that you can use within it. So a lot of different things that you can do within this. Also like a Microsoft publisher, as you were mentioning uh, a little bit earlier, you can use it in that kind of a method. You can print, you can export anything you make in here. So as long as you can format it the way you want it, you can make this a digital publishing kind of tool. Again, publisher is more of a guided and directed, um, more of a professional um, publishing um, program. Uh, but you can definitely get things done within OneNote. And I feel that you have a lot more freedom within here again because you can use the stylus input, which Publisher really doesn't like uh, to work with in terms of uh, touch and stylus input. So those are just some of the things I know about. There's so many more things you'll probably be able to come up with, uh, but those are the most common items that people have told me about and I see uh, in the field with this, uh, with this tool. Another nice part about OneNote is that it doesn't have to be saved into the cloud. I know I talk, I will mention a lot of the cloud aspects of it, uh, but as Ruth was saying, you know, um, some of us don't like to have this kind of thing connected in the cloud. Maybe you're gonna be keeping very personal notes on here and you're scared of putting that up in the cloud. You don't have to leverage the cloud aspect of this. You can use this as a standalone, put it on my computer only or put it on my tablet only kind of program and you can just keep those notes in a silo like we're used to doing with Word and Excel files uh, in the past. Yes? So if you have several notebooks going and you want one to be personal and not on the cloud and maybe another on the cloud? Yeah, you can choose where to save them. You can say save one on the computer and you can say save the other one in my OneDrive account because I want to share that with family members or the coworkers or people in my class, things of that nature. So yeah, you can pick and choose which notebooks are gonna be public, which ones, well, which ones are gonna be in the cloud, and then you can also have the option to share, to choose which ones will be shared out. So just because it goes into OneDrive doesn't mean it's, it's shared, and I'm gonna mention some of the specifics about how the cloud interaction comes to play uh, with this product, uh, in that I know a lot of people think cloud means sharing automatically, that does not. It does not mean it's being shared with anyone unless you force it to be shared. Uh, I, I mentioned a little bit about all the different devices that we can use with the OneNote product. Um, it truly is multi-platform for every single device out there as far as I know except for BlackBerry. That's the only device that I know that doesn't have an app for it, but remember BlackBerry users are definitely uh, dwindling by the day. So um, I'm going to be showing off, again, working on the Windows version here today, which is the most powerful version. There are additions, as you can see, for the iPad over here. Um, there is a version that runs on every single mobile phone, Android, Windows phone, iPhone, that you can download. There is an online version that's called OneNote Online that you can only use through OneDrive.com, uh, and that is the cloud version of it, and that can be obviously shared out very easily with others. You can access your notes that you start in your OneNote program on your Mac or your tablet or your computer, put it in your OneDrive, and then you can access it on your online. And then you can access also on your mobile phone. And I'm gonna show off how some of that works. That seamless aspect comes into play when you use your OneDrive account um, to do that synchronization. Um, and I'm gonna mention how we can do some sharing aspects with this. I, you know, That's one of the biggest selling points in this Evernote charges for that functionality. OneNote gives it away free of charge. Um, did I mention, did I forget any devices? Other than Android phones, Android tablets, there's a Windows Store app for the new Windows tablets and Windows 8 devices. So every single device you can put your hands on has an app for this. So it really is the most multi-platform digital note-taking notebook kind of tool um, that is on the market uh, as far as I'm concerned. And all of them are completely free. There is no charge to use the program. It used to be a paid product on Windows. Now it's, over the last few months, it's been opened up uh, and it's accessible on all the devices, completely free. Even the full-blown Windows version is now free as of, I think, March of this year. Um, and that's a completely free download uh, that you can get. 
That's the website you can get it at. You can get the other versions as well at onenote.com slash download. Um, but again, the paid Windows version now is completely free for you as well. There's a Windows Store version that you can get. The iPad version is obviously free as well. Um, and there is a full-blown Mac version too, a traditional Mac app um, for OneNote. It's similar to the Windows version, but it's got some of the features uh, removed that they couldn't uh, put in just yet. So definitely go ahead and download that for yourself. Um, and again, uh, today in class, we're going to work a little bit with the online versions of the web browsers. I can show you and get your hands dirty with how that works, as that might be the way most of you get started is through the web browser, and then you can probably branch out into the full-blown, full-featured apps for yourselves. Okay? <clears throat> um, and the only aspect that is paid for OneNote, the only thing you would have to pay for is if you wanted to have more storage on your cloud account. If you were storing a lot of things, and it's not just OneNote notebooks you can store. Obviously, in OneDrive, you can store Word files, Excel files. If you needed more space than 7 gigabytes, that's the only time you would be asked to pay anything, which is for increased storage. But um, your free OneDrive account has access to 7 gigabytes of free storage space uh, for anyone. <clears throat> so one of the biggest things with OneNote, and um, you can't actually share OneNote notebooks in a traditional manner like a Word file. So OneNote's a little bit different than most other apps in the Office suite in that in order to share and work with other people with OneNote notebooks, um, as opposed to just emailing attachments like we used to do, you know, grandma emailing the attachment word file to little Jimmy, and you know, he, he's emailing off to mom, and, and, and email chains that we used, chains that we used to have. Um, we can't do that with OneNote, because OneNote is a product that's meant to be sitting on your computer or sitting in your OneDrive account, and it's meant to be, if it's gonna be shared with others, it has to be shared through the OneDrive uh, aspect. So you can't just pick it up as a Word file and transfer it off as an attachment to others. It actually has to sit on your machine and be shared out through the sharing functionalities. Um, otherwise, you're gonna get gobbledygook that gets sent to someone and it's not gonna connect properly. And the reason that works that way is because OneNote is such an intricate tool that pulls from so many places on your computer um, in the way that it auto saves and can pull files off the web and snippets off the web and audio recordings. It's, it's got a lot more fingers that are working behind the scenes than a traditional Word file that encapsulates everything in a single little file, uh, which is why we can't just pick up that file and just send it out and, and share it in a traditional manner. So I'm gonna show off how proper sharing works within OneNote. Um, and it makes life very easy because as opposed to this goofy email chain we used to do with emailing attachments, um, now we can just share it out with someone's email address or give them a link to get into it and they can access it you know, no matter what device uh, that they're on. <coughs> um, and OneDrive is the tool that you need to use to do the sharing aspect. I'm gonna go over a little bit of that and how that works. Um, again, OneDrive is a free cloud service from Microsoft that allows you to save your notebooks in the, into the service if you want to, only if you want to, uh, and then gives you the free backup uh, of your notebook. So if you lose your machine or your machine becomes corrupted, you won't lose your notebook files and you can also share them uh, on there as well. So it's a, it's a neat tool. Uh, if you go on the back of our agenda, our YouTube channel link is on there. You can view our OneDrive class we did uh, two months ago, actually. I took the screenshot uh, just about a day ago. So that class was actually just two months ago, and you can view it right on our videos list um, there. Okay, so we're gonna dig in. I'm gonna go over some of the aspects of OneNote. We're gonna actually start using the, uh, the program. And again, since you guys don't have it on your computers, um, at least I don't believe, do we have one on the computers, Ruth? Okay. No, this is Office 2007. 2007, okay, okay. Um, what version of Office did they put on the machines, do you know? Because it is in the higher end version of 2007. Oh yeah, this is a professional version. It, it so might be on there. The program might be on there, but the interface has changed quite a bit since 2007, so you might be able to jump into it on the machine and maybe oh, take a look for it. Um, but otherwise, we'll follow along with, with what I'm doing up here on the screen, okay? All right, so let's go into OneNote here. I already have it installed. I'm not gonna go over the installation process. You can download it for yourself. Uh, I'm gonna be using the traditional uh, Windows version here today. Uh, and I actually have a convertible tablet with, with uh, writing input on it. So I'm gonna be showing off how some of the note-taking aspects work in that regard. Um, you can use OneNote without a stylus, without a touch screen. 
It's just, as I said, the cleanest and best experience of OneNote is with a stylus device on a tablet that you can uh, write on. But uh, by all means, you can use it as a tool without any kind of uh, handwriting input as well. Um, and just so you see, I'm gonna go into really quickly the Windows Store version. Um, this is how the version on the tablets is going to look across the different tablet devices. So I downloaded this from the Windows Store completely free. Um, and unfortunately I can't go into it because my screen resolution is too low. So I can't show that off um, to you. If I change my screen resolution, it's gonna throw off my recording and all that. So I can't go into it, but again, it's a trimmed down version and all my notebooks that I'm working on, I have access to within that version as well. Uh, as long, along with my other devices uh, that I sign into. So let's go over some of the basics of the interface. Again, it's a little scary, and again, since the Windows version is the, the Big Brother version that has all the different features of the program, uh, it's got a lot to offer on it, and I'm gonna show off how a lot of this looks and works so you can become uh, familiar with it. So this is actually a good time where you can actually follow along. I'm gonna go over some of the items on the first page of the cheat sheet with us, okay? And we'll go over the interface. And but first off, I want to really quickly start off with the concept of notebooks. Okay, so so unlike Word files and Excel files, where we create an Excel file, we we sit, sit somewhere on a machine. Um, OneNote's a little bit more intricate in that, and works in the concept of notebooks. So I could have one notebook. I could have five different notebooks. I'll actually open up my little notebooks area right on the left hand side here, and you'll see that I have multiple different notebooks here um, that I have saved on my computer at this time. And some of, and uh, all of these are actually my OneDrive account. Uh, none of them are my local machine. But they'll look the same no matter where you place them. Uh, it's just a matter of where it actually gets stored. So the concept of a notebook is exactly the same like it works in a paper notebook. And the reason I brought my paper notebook is not because I'm gonna be writing in this and showing you anything here, but think of a OneNote notebook to work in a similar fashion, right? We have a notebook that is for a particular different subject or a different uh, logical content area that we're working on within a notebook, right? This is more of a collegiate notebook, so it's got different sections where I can divide different things that I'm working on, right? I have different sections. There are sections within OneNote, and those are visible at the top here. So within a notebook, I now have different sections for myself that I can, I can add sections for myself, and they come up as different tabs. And within sections, I go down even further, and obviously we have pages in a notebook, pages within my OneNote, it's stored as separate pages on the right-hand side for myself. And some of the tablet versions, pages show on the left-hand side, I believe. But again, very similar concept. Notebooks divided into sections, divided into pages. So this is how you can start thinking of organizing uh, some of your items. And again, it's up to you. There's no one way to organize your things in OneNote, right? I see some people that um, you know get very granular on how many pages they make. I see some people that make a separate section for everything that they want to do. It's up to you. You know, it's up to you how you want to organize uh, that file. Just like with Excel, you have a lot of freedom. OneNote gives you the same kind of, uh, of freedom as well. Every single section um, that comes up, um, you can uh, assign a title to a particular section. So this particular notebook I'm within right now, this is one of the default notebooks. As soon as you make one note, it makes a notebook called Derek's Notebook or John's Notebook, whatever your name is on the computer, and that gets made just so you can start getting your feet wet. Uh, but I do recommend that you make a proper notebook if you're going to be working on something for the long term, if you're going to be using it for class notes. I use OneNote for class notes. I'm in grad school now uh, at DePaul, so I am using it for all of my class notes for myself, um, for everything that I'm storing um, for class. So I'm taking snippets from presentations that are going on. I'm marking those up with my pen, as you can see here. Um, so you know you can get very detailed in how you use these different pages within a notebook, and I'm going to go over you know how some of those aspects uh, do function. One of the items that you will see up on the screen, and this is co very common between the, especially the Mac version and the full-blown Windows version, is the ribbon interface. So for some people, when you open it up on your computer, you might have it minimized like this. I like to have it actually expanded for myself. So it's gonna actually show in this manner. I like to see my full ribbon. And this is the same ribbon that we have across 
all of the different Office products. If you use Word, Excel, or anything since version 2007, we're used to the ribbon already, okay? And this is the same for uh, the new OneNote program as well. It's got different items on a ribbon, and it's divided into different logical functions for ourselves. So the Home tab has all the basics, like co copy and paste, and formatting options, and styles, and setting up some of the things like to-do lists, which I'll show off in a little bit later. Uh, going over to the Insert tab, I'm going to show off some of these aspects a little bit later on as well, as some of these things are very, very neat in what you can do. I can insert file printouts, attachments. I can go ahead and do direct audio and video recordings right into my OneNote pages. I can insert date and time. I can put equations in. That's very neat. Um, if you have students in the home that might possibly use this for schoolwork, um, I used to work at District 207 at Maine South. There were teachers that were actually using the equation functionality to put equations into notes and then sharing that with students. It's very powerful and it works very well. I'll show some of that off a little bit later. Uh, screen clippings you can insert. This is probably the most popular um, function that I use within OneNote as I can go ahead and clip anything off a screen like a web page, a news article, snip it out, put it into a page, and then I can mark it up or I can search through that text for myself. Very, very neat functionality that I can't really do within many other programs. Uh, you can do it within Word, but it's very clumsy to do something like that within Word. This is a very natural feel within OneNote. Uh, there is a Draw tab. This is where I have all my features, especially if you have a pen-style device for yourself. Um, you know, Here I can choose between my different uh, pen aspects and, and pen colors, or I can you know, use a highlighter for myself. Uh, my particular pen on my tablet has an eraser on the back, so if I flip it, I can go ahead and I can erase anything on my page, and that's specific just to tablets that have a stylus. Um, the most common devices, obviously everyone's seen the Surface tablet out there, that is probably the most common and popular device for people that really want to start using this heavily as a digital notebook. Um, I'm using a ThinkPad tablet, a convertible hybrid. Uh, the Lenovo Yoga is very popular. It's a tablet that flips you know, into tablet mode. The keyboard goes in the back this way, and then you flip it back the other way. Uh, it can be a, a laptop, so that's a very neat one that a lot of people like as well. So a lot of different options out there. You can do a lot of this on the iPad as well. Um, the problem with the iPad, all the iPads actually, is that you can't use a very fine stylus with it. Um, the stylus on the iPads has more of a bumpy tip. It, it provides, it makes a very um, dirty, I'll say a very dirty style uh, writing input, but you can do it. If you really have to do it, you really want to do it, you can get a stylus for the iPad. It's just not going to be as clean and as natural as what you get on, on one of these uh, Windows devices. Derek? Yes, go ahead. Is there any typing allowed, or you always have to use a stylus? Oh, you can definitely type. Yeah, I'll go into that in just a little bit, but I can definitely, if I go into um, regular type mode, yeah, I can, I can definitely type into this. So, yeah, typing, typing, I, I mean, again, it's meant to Primarily for the you know touch for if stylus input first, but um, there's plenty of options for typing within here. I do it quite often, and I'm going to go into that uh, as well for you, so you can see um, both aspects. Uh, history tab. I don't use this very much. This is more so if you're using this between many different people. You can see different revisions that were made between uh, different parties, uh, page versions on pages, uh, similar to a tracking history or tracking changes. My gosh. Um, tracking changes within Word, very similar feature exists within, uh, within OneNote for ourselves. Uh, and then the review tab, again, some of the things like thesaurus and research that I can do within there. I can go ahead and password protect the section for myself. Um, and that's so if I'm using this as a shared notebook between different people, but there's a section I want to password protect just for myself, I can go ahead and do that right up there. Uh, and then the View tab has a few different options on it, which I'll show off, especially this ruled lines feature, which you can go ahead and use as a, make it look like an actual notebook for ourselves. So that's pretty neat. Some of the aspects, other aspects about the uh, interface over here on the left-hand side, at any given time, I can go ahead and click on where it says my actual notebook name. I can click on that. And if I want to pin it, I can have it open like that so I can switch between my different notebooks very quickly and easily. In that nature, um, I like to have more of my screen, so I take it off, but I can get access to all of them at any given time. And I can make a new notebook within here whenever I want. I can make a notebook here. I can also use the File tab, and I can make a new notebook 
over here as well, and it's going to ask me where I want to place that. Um, so again, there's multiple different paths to do anything within OneNote, just like within any other Office product. So I'm going to show the way, the most common way that I do it, but there are multiple ways to do a lot of different functions. There is a unified search bar on the right-hand side within OneNote that I can use, and this searches all of my notebooks. This searches text within all my notebooks. This can search if I enable pictures and images within my notebook, and I'll actually show that off. Um, well, I'll show that up a little bit later, but I can search text within pictures actually within this as well for myself, and I can even search handwritten notes. Again, this is for the Windows version only, but I use this quite a bit. My handwriting is a little dirty and, and not very neat all the time, so it doesn't work 100% of the time, but in general, even with my slappy handwriting, about 80% of the time, I can search for a word that I wrote down in handwriting and it'll actually find it. It OCRs, or it translates handwritten text and picture text into searchable text, so I can search anything within my notebooks. And that's one of the most powerful aspects of this. Searching within a paper notebook becomes a little difficult when it becomes full. Searching within OneNote is very, very easy, as long as the text can be read by a computer. That's one of the biggest things that this does very well. And one of the things that I like about this program above Evernote, Evernote has a decent ability in terms of searching. It, has, it, it cannot search as far as I know handwritten text yet, but OneNote allows me to search text from any kind of item that I've inserted uh, into my OneNote pages. So we're gonna go over that uh, in a little bit. Um, is there anything else in the interface that I want to show off to everyone? Again, there's a file tab um, that you want to know about. This, uh, when you open it up, the file tab, it'll show you some of the most recent notebooks uh, that I have. I can make a new notebook for myself, and again, I can save it to my personal OneDrive, my OneDrive for my company. Um, I can save it right on my computer, so if you don't want to put it on your OneDrive, you can choose the computer option here. Make a name for it, and it'll just save it right onto your local computer. It does not touch the cloud, does not touch any other computer system or any other website uh, that is local to your machine only. So that is definitely an option that you can do for yourself. I can open notebooks from other locations for myself, depending on where they're stored. Um, there is obviously printing functionality. I'll show that off in a little bit for ourselves. Sharing, as I talked about, is very easy to do. We're going to show off sharing uh, a little bit later as well, so I can show everyone how sharing works. Uh, and I can also export. I can export my notebook and share it with others, or I can go ahead and export just a page as a Word file, or you know, export it as a PDF for myself. Um, so there's a lot of different options here. And again, as you were asking about a publishing tool, this is what I would probably be using. I would format my page how I would want it, or set of pages, and then I can export that as a PDF or a Word document, whatever kind of format I wanted to save it in. Uh, so again, not as many options in saving as Publisher provides, but I'd say it's pretty darn versatile in, in what we can do here uh, for ourselves. Uh, and then send feature, we'll go ahead and I can quickly send this as a PDF through email. This is primarily meant to be used as sending out over email uh, for myself. Uh, and then under account, it'll tell you exactly what OneDrive account you're signed into. In my instance, I'm signed into multiple OneDrives. This is for my work and my personal. Um, so you can go ahead and sign in and sign out of those different accounts uh, for yourself very easily. Now again, this screen will look different on the Mac and the other devices. It may not even exist on some devices. Uh, this is primarily for the, the Windows interface. But I want to show how it looks in case you do start you know, using that for yourself. <clears throat> okay. Uh, that is all in terms of the interface um, basics. Here, oh, the last thing I want to show off is the quick access toolbar. Uh, this does exist in the Mac version. I'm pretty certain the tablet versions don't have this. But in the upper part of the screen, I can go ahead and I can set certain buttons here that can, I can quickly use for myself. For example, I could have back buttons and read undo buttons, print button for myself, and I can change that in the same way we do in Word, Excel, and the other, all the other apps. I can make my favorite pen show up over there so I can turn them on. So again, it's just a quick way that I can get access to all of my most common functions, I guess I'll call it. Most common functions with an office, I can tab them right up here on the top of the screen for myself, and I can use all the common ones that they offer right off the bat, or I can customize it even further based upon anything that I want to use uh, from OneNote. So that's an easy way to you know, customize that, that, that screen, the, the quick button screen, to make it what you want it to be. Okay? So I went ahead and I made a notebook um, 
for myself just yesterday for this class that I'm going to be sort of using as our dumping ground, our sort of template uh, that we can work with them today as I don't want to screw up my school notebooks um, for myself. So I made a recipe book, uh, OneNote. So, so a lot of people talk about using OneNote as a place to store recipes. It's a very easy thing to do within this product, especially because it can be shared. Um, I, I do know some people that do use it in this manner where you can set up for a recipe notebook, make different, different sections for yourself based upon different kind of food categories, and then different pages represent your different recipes. So that is a very good example, easy example to understand for how a notebook could be used for a recipe collection for yourself. So I went ahead, I created my notebook uh, for myself. I made a first tab, I'm Polish, so of course I'm gonna make a Polish cooking section for myself. And I made my first recipe on here, uh, how to make pierogi, one of my favorite uh, Polish foods. So I, I grabbed a picture actually off of a web page for myself and I dumped it into here. Um, and this works in the same manner as any other program within the Office Suite. I can paste anything into here uh, for myself. So for example, if I did a search for uh, different kinds of pierogi, Go to Google Images. This is the picture I used previously. If I wanted to maybe show up a picture of my final product, I could go ahead and simply copy that and I can paste it right into OneNote for myself. And then I can take that picture and I can resize it to however I want. And I can even move it between pages. So again, a lot of the concepts we use within Word, Excel, cutting, copying, pasting, works the same way within OneNote. I don't have to reteach anything. You don't have to relearn really really anything new there. The biggest aspects that you want to grasp your mind around and, and, and get a feel for is how organization works within OneNote because that's the biggest thing that throws a lot of people off. It is not a Word file. It is a sort of, it's a living and breathing notebook more so. It's not just a single encapsulated file uh, in that regard. So again, I showed off, I have a section over here. If I wanted to add a new section for myself, I could click on the plus button, make a new section. Maybe we'll make an Italian, maybe we'll make an Italian foods section. And I can make my first one, my first page title, my favorite spaghetti. This is the area where I put my title in for any page that I make. You don't have to put a title in for your pages, but if you do put a title in, it puts the date that you made it or you last updated it, and then it'll also show on your pages area over here. If you don't put a title in, it'll be a blank page and you won't know what it is. So I do recommend that you do put titles in for all of your pages just for the sake of organization or searchability so you can find that if your notebook gets so large and you don't even know where you're placing your pages uh, anymore for yourself. Um, I can go ahead, I can move pages between sections uh, for myself. Um, so I can go ahead and I can right click on a page, I can do a cut on it and a paste, or I could just do a move to, and I can go ahead and move it into a different section for myself. So if I feel that, hey, spaghetti shouldn't be in Italian foods, should be in Polish foods, even though that's wrong, I can go ahead and I can right click on that page and I can do move or copy, and I can place it under my Polish cooking area. And then if I go under here, there it is. I've just moved it. So it's actually very nice. Unlike a traditional book, we can't move pages around unless we're cutting out and, 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 and pasting in, in pages. Um, this is a very easy way to move it between different sections for myself and even between different notebooks. So again, very versatile. I can, everything is malleable. Everything can be moved around and, and changed for myself uh, in a very easy manner. And so you can do edit and undo also? Oh yeah, yeah. So I can put some text in here and I can do Undo, it's gone. But if you did edit undo, it would take your spaghetti and put it back. Uh, it should move it back. It should move it back for myself. Um, in this instance, I think because I started doing something different, it didn't allow me to do the undo command. But let's let's try it. Let me move it back to Italian. Move Italian. And then let's see. Undo. It worked. Yeah. So it does remember. It's pretty pretty darn powerful in uh, in that regard. Um, I showed everyone when I was in the file tab how I can go ahead and when I make a new notebook I can save it into my OneDrive for myself and you have to be signed into your OneDrive before you can make a notebook within your OneDrive. Otherwise you'll just get an option that says computer and it's going to ask you where you want to save it. By default it has a spot in your user folder that it saves it, but I can make it in a new different folder if I wanted. I can find whatever folder on my computer that I want to place it within to, um, so it's very simple to do that. I would probably use the default location as OneNote is very um, 
It, it allows the OneNote to memorize where the OneNote notebook was placed and it can easy get access to it. Um, but again, you can place it wherever you want. You can save it on a thumb drive if you want. You can save it to an external hard drive, wherever you may want to place that OneNote notebook. But I do recommend either put it in OneDrive or save it in the default location uh, it asks you to put it into. Saving within OneNote is very nice because unlike other programs where we have to worry about losing files, as soon as the OneNote notebook is made, everything is being saved automatically. And just to make that point clear, let me put some text in here and I'm gonna quickly close out the program. Not hitting save on anything. As soon as we go back into it, go back into OneNote, everything's still there. That's part of the reason why we can't just send OneNote notebooks around without exporting it as a packaged file is because OneNote has this very intricate and nice saving capability. Everything's saved on the fly automatically, right? So this is actually a very nice tool because unlike Word and Excel where I have to remember to auto-save it and save it and make sure I don't lose anything, as soon as my notebook is made, it is remembering everything I'm doing uh, within, that, within the program, which is very nice because my computer loses power or my tablet loses power and I was putting something in, I know that you know, a content is saved there within the, within the product without me having to do anything and there is no save button. You can't hit save because it is saving behind the scenes automatically. So that's another nice thing about OneNote. It's, it's watching your back so you don't have to. <clears throat> so let's keep going over here. Putting stuff into OneNote. How can I go ahead and actually fill this tool up with things that I want to place in here? Now I showed off some of the basics here about putting text in. I can put text in anywhere I want to. I can go between my different pages. Let me add a page into my Italian foods. Um, <clears throat> what's an Italian food besides spaghetti? Ravioli. Ravioli. All right, let's make a ravioli page over here. Um, and I wanted to show off this actually a little bit earlier, but if I go into the, um, I can go ahead and I can attach a style to this page for myself or use different templates uh, within here. Um, and where is my templates area? I don't use this that often. Here we go. There's a templates area. I can click on insert page templates. And there are a lot of different templates that are by default loaded into OneNote. Um, so for example, if I was going ahead and making a simple to-do list for myself, I could use one of the to-do list options here, and it would set up a to-do list for me, so I don't have to manually do that for myself. Uh, if I wanted to go ahead and maybe make a business project overview, there we go, I can insert one of those very easily for myself without lifting a finger, and I can just edit that. And as you see, it's adding in separate pages for me. So as soon as I put that in, uh, it actually went ahead and started adding in different pages uh, for me when I did that. Um, and there are a lot of different templates on here. There are some that are built into the um, product and there are a lot more you can get on office.com. They're completely free on the templates work on the Mac and the Windows version as far as I know. Uh, there are some academic templates I could use, like if I was taking notes um, for a lecture, for a math science class, I can go ahead and insert a template like that. So it's got a lot of neat templates that are built in. I'm not saying that they'll meet everyone's needs, but uh, they do have some, uh, some interesting ones uh, you know, within here. Some blank templates that I could use as well for different sizes. This is actually where it might come handy if you're trying to use this as a Microsoft Publisher alternative. I could go ahead and make a postcard within here and sort of have different size files over here. All kinds of different basic sized um, sheets and postcards, index cards that I could choose from, different backgrounds as well. So again, you can give this a try for yourself and, and, and give it a run. I can go ahead, I can just right click on a page and delete it for myself if I don't want it. So we'll get rid of some of those. Just wanna show everyone how the templates look. Um, back into my ravioli page, if I wanted to make this look like an actual notebook, this is what a lot of people ask me when I show customers this product. They ask me, how can I actually make it look like a notebook? It's called OneNote, but it doesn't look like a darn notebook. Well, go to the View tab, go into Rule Lines, and here I can actually put in to make it look like a notebook with whatever kind of size spacing I want within that notebook. So if I wanted to go ahead and actually take handwritten notes on what recipe I was doing, I can go ahead, get my pen out, and I can actually start adding things over here. My handwriting is definitely not the best. What is, you could type in also. You can type in also, yeah. Yeah, I'm 
want to show both aspects of, 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 uh, for this though, because a lot of people are starting to get you know, touch devices. If I want to type it out, I can simply go ahead and place my cursor within here and do the same thing. Works in exactly the same manner. I can format all my text as well, make my text size larger, change my colors on it, change my font. I have all kinds of different options that I can do with that. So text, very versatile, works very easily, and I can have pages that have handwritten notes, text notes, and I'm going to show off some of the other items that we can insert on pages because there are a lot more we can put on pages than just handwriting and uh, typed in notes from a keyboard. So let's keep going here. Let me close out of my templates area. Um, and just to show off that that search is working, let's go ahead and type in a search there. I hit Control F, and there we go. I typed in water. It found water that I wrote with my sloppy handwriting and it found water that I typed into my keyboard. So that's pretty neat. That I can't, I, I, most people wouldn't even be able to tell that that's water, because our program didn't know that I, that I wrote in water over there. So you can see some of that handwriting recognition already coming into play for us. Um, there is a tool on the Windows version. I'm not sure about the Mac version. There is an add to OneNote tool that shows up whenever your computer starts up that looks like this on the lower part of the screen here. Let me actually zoom in here so you see how that looks. I can tap that little icon in my system tray and it brings up this little window for us. Send to OneNote. And again, I think the Mac version has this, I'm not 100% sure, and it should look very similar to this. And what this allows me to do is I can go ahead and create a screen clipping out of anything that's on my screen. I'm gonna show you how that works. I can go ahead and send to OneNote. I have PowerPoint open. I can send in a PowerPoint, my entire slide. I can send in one slide from PowerPoint. If I had a Word file open, I could send in the Word file into OneNote so it sees any other Office items I have open and it allows me to capture that and send it right into OneNote. So I don't have to go through the insert attachment and go through that process. I can just say, hey, I've got a Word file open that I want to put in OneNote, open up my, my little um, send to OneNote tool and I can put it in with one click. Or I can even make a quick note for myself. If I'm on a website or I'm going ahead and perusing something about a recipe I want to do, I can make a quick note for myself around that, and that will make a separate page for myself that I can just insert. And it'll actually show a little window um, where you can actually insert. I'm just how that looks. So if I did new quick note, it'll bring up a simple little screen here that I can use. Now my screen is showing over here. I've got a little issue with how my OneDrive's connecting to my service. So it's having an issue with the synchronization, but on any other computer, it should go ahead and send that into my OneNote notebook for myself, and I can go back into that uh, at any given time. Um, <clears throat> so let me show you how you can snip things off of websites. This is one of the neatest features. I use the snipping functionality, and I showed how that looked. I was actually doing it when my professor was going ahead in, my, in class and showing off different PowerPoint slides. I was actually snipping them in and placing them into my OneNote pages for myself. So let me show you how that looks so you can give that a try when you start using OneNote. Go back into my recipe book over here. Okay, ravioli. So for example, if I was doing a search or I was finding something uh, about ravioli, let's see if I can find a ravioli recipe. Okay, let's see, uh, four cheese ravioli recipe. Let's see how this one comes up here. <clears throat> Sometimes not all pages are set up in a good manner where we can go ahead and easily pop this page into OneNote. So sometimes it's a little bit easier to go ahead and we can go ahead and we can print this. So one option is we can go ahead and print this recipe out. And if I do print, and I hit print here, it will allow me to print. And one of the things I can do is I can go ahead and change my printer over to my send to OneNote printer. The Mac version should have this as well. You will not get this on tablets. This is only on a computer uh, interface. If I do send to OneNote and I do print, it will go ahead and ask me, where do I want to place that printout? Well, I want it in my Italian food section. I actually want to put it in my ravioli page. Press OK. And look at that. There's my web page. I got my recipe in a nice printed format right on my page, and now I can go ahead and I can even start marking that up if I wanted to for myself, whatever I wanted to do there. 
very simply. So that's the printing functionality. That goes ahead and instead of printing through your printer, it prints out a file into any OneNote page that you have for yourself. So this is an easy way to grab something off a website and place it within your OneNote pages. Optionally, if I just wanted to grab a part of this, say for example, I just wanted to grab this ingredients list for myself. I didn't want the whole page. The printout is gonna give me all the gobbledygook, all the ads and all the junk on there. I just want this ingredient section for myself. I can go ahead and do this. Let's open up my send to OneNote. Let's do a screen clipping. And now I can go ahead and I can just select, I'm using my mouse, I can do this with my finger as well if I wanted to, just use my mouse and select the area that I wanted to send in. Same thing, it's gonna ask me, where do I wanna place it? Where do you wanna place that screen clipping you just made? Well, again, I wanna place it into my ravioli page. And I'm gonna press send to selected section. As soon as I go back into OneNote, voila, there is my ingredients that I just snipped out. And one other thing to know about OneNote is pages can be as wide as you want them to be, they can be as long as you want them to be. Keep it within reason, right? You don't want pages to get obnoxiously large, but I have some pages I've made that have gone on for a very, very, very long time. So unlike a traditional notebook that stops at eight and a half by 11, this can be, you know, 20, 40 by 11, whatever you want it to be, all you have to do is hit your mouse cursor down or to the right. So you have an unlimited canvas you can use per page. So that's another nice aspect to, to definitely know about. So I got my ingredients over here. I'm gonna move this down. And again, I can mark that up. I can go ahead and, and you know do highlights on that. Um, if I wanted to, let's go to my draw, let's bring out my highlighter and uh, you know say, this is what I need to remember to purchase. That's what I need to purchase, this this and my olive oil. There we go. And that automatically saves and um, you know it gets saved into my page for myself and I can go ahead and keep on adding other things into my page if I wanted to. Now another aspect about snipping in pictures like this that have text is I can make this searchable for myself. Here's another neat function within OneNote. If I right click on this picture for myself and I do make text and image searchable, well, this one was by default turned on. Not everyone's will be turned on by default. It's usually disabled, but I can turn on um, translation or searchability within English, French, and Spanish. But for the time being, there may be other languages added in, uh, in the future, but I want it in English, obviously. It's, it's selected now. So now, if I do a find for shredded, it should find shredded shredded is highlighted for me right there. So that was a picture previously, now it's actually searchable. It's a regular text entry pretty much. One note knows exactly what to do with it. So if I had a huge recipe notebook that was 60, 70 recipes long and I was trying to find what I could make with uh, shredded mozzarella and maybe some ricotta cheese, I could do a search for it within one note. I could find exactly what recipe I used that within. That's pretty powerful. Not many programs I know of that they can do something like that uh, within, unless it's a traditional Word file, you know, but again, it comes, becomes unwieldy to keep saving everything in that manner. This I have in a nice notebook. Everything's within one single section under the different um, foods that I want to save it under. And again, I can make these sections and different recipe pages, you know, to my heart's content for whatever I want, and I can move them around between the different sections or different notebooks, even if I wanted to. Um, I showed off how to do ruled line paper within a page with a notebook. Um, I showed off how handwriting can be done within uh, OneNote as well. Again, you can do that on an iPad with a stylus. You can do it on a regular Windows tablet. Um, you can do it on your phone if you can do um, with your finger as well. It's not going to come out that clean, but you can do it if you wanted to. Um, I want to show off another aspect. This is really useful for students or teachers. So if I wanted to go ahead and insert I can go into the insert tab here. I can go ahead and insert an equation for myself. Very simply, by going ahead and clicking on the equation option here, and I can go ahead and either type in my equation, but even more powerful, I can handwrite that equation. So I don't know if we have any teachers or students in the crowd, possibly not, but for the sake of my recording, I want people to be able to see this. Um, so if I type out two plus two, Four, there we are. Did exactly what I put up on the screen there. I can erase that, 
be a little more complicated. Sometimes it has a, you know, a little difficulty seeing what I'm putting in. For some reason, it doesn't like my five. There we go. Good. Now it looks good. And I can go ahead and I can insert that as an equation. Now, again, that becomes a lot more useful for much more complex equations um, that we're doing. Obviously, things with a lot of different uh, symbols and things that are very difficult, especially when I was a high school student. It was very difficult to put into some kind of digital format. Now it's really easy to put into a digital format because we can write it out with our pen and we can have it inserted as an actual equation uh, within the program. So I think that's a very powerful feature for people that are doing math or science driven uh, items. So how do we add in some other different items? We did text, we did snippets off web pages, pictures are very easy off websites, copy and paste, there, any kind of, anything you can copy can be pasted within OneNote. So that's very simple, I'm not going to show off too much copy and pasting as we can see we've done quite a bit of copying and pasting here uh, for our items. I had some of our pierogi page. We had uh, these items on here. And actually, this image, I want to see, did I make this searchable? Yes, this one is searchable. So if I went ahead and I searched for, let's see, frying. I got frying over here and all these different uh, sections, all these different items on this picture. Let's do a search for frying. It found it within this page. Now, by default, it searches across all my pages. I want to make it just for this particular page I'm on. Control F, and there we go. Where's frying showing up? Frying, frying, frying. One, two, three. Okay, so it missed one of them. For some reason, it didn't find this one over here. Could have been a little impurity in the picture and how it came out, but for the most part, it found most of the frying aspects over here. It's not perfect. Again, this is a computer program, um, but it does a pretty good job uh, with that searchability for us. So some of the other things that we can insert here. It's cool, we've done some of the, the other basic items. Let's see what else we can put in. Let's go into the Insert tab. Some of the other things that we can put in for ourselves, we can put a table in. If I wanted to put a table into my page here, I could very simply throw a table in, and I could insert text, a very light version of Excel. Uh, if you're going to get too complicated, uh, you might want to go ahead and you know, just use Excel for that. Um, but for very basic kind of things, I can insert a table. and. and use that for myself. I want to organize some information. I can insert a file printout uh, for myself if I wanted to. And again, this is more meant for finding other printouts from OneNote that I've done in the past. File attachment. Um, again, I can find file anywhere on my computer. Let's see if I have something on my desktop that I can put within here. Uh, let's see. I'll just keep my, uh, nothing, nothing that I can share on the, on the public computer screen here right now. Uh, but I can put in attachments, I can put in Word files uh, for myself. And even within Word, for example, or Excel, if I'm in within, within these different products, I can very easily go ahead and go into export. Uh, and there should be an option where I can export this right into uh, OneNote for myself. Or I, that might be the, hold on. There is an option here. I haven't used it in a while. Um, but there is an option here to send it right into OneNote for myself. I could, I could use it through the file menu if I wanted to, or again, I could go ahead and send to OneNote. It knows I have Word open. I can choose send to OneNote, and now say I want to go ahead and I'll send it into my Italian food section. Press OK, and there we go. That was a document that I started within Word right there. Now it's within a page within my OneNote section under Italian Foods. So again, I can start something complex within Word or start something complex in Excel and then send it off to OneNote for myself and I can keep working on it and have the, the aspects of being able to do highlighting uh, and things of that nature for myself and I can keep, you know, I can keep on typing if I wanted to uh, right within here. So very, very easy uh, to do things of that nature. Other cool things, spreadsheets, obviously, we can go ahead and we can use an existing spreadsheet within here. Um, we can go ahead and insert a diagram from Visio. If you've ever made complex um, drawings or uh, concept maps or mind maps within Visio, you can put those right into here to continue marking them up uh, in, in a little bit easier fashion. Screen clipping works the same way as the Send to OneNote tool. Again, allows me to go ahead and clip a part of my screen and inserts it for me 
right into OneNote like that for myself. So very useful if you're making things like tutorials or how-tos for people or taking things off of web pages, especially some new sites like Time or New York Times, um, the new websites that don't make it easy to print stuff out nicely. This makes it really easy for you to go ahead and take whole articles for yourself. And actually, let's try doing that. Uh, let's, let's go over to Wall Street Journal. And we'll try pulling an article Let's go to Wall Street Journal and let's see if we can pull a article for myself or a part of an article. So again, if you're doing a full article and it doesn't show on the full screen, you usually want to use the print functionality. The print functionality then will go ahead and take the whole page and put it into one note. But if I just wanted something like, maybe I just wanted to go ahead and of course it'll take forever to load. But say for example, I just wanted to go ahead and take a snippet of just how this part of the home screen looked within the on a particular website, use my send to OneNote tool or go into insert, screen clipping, and then I can take a nice snippet, boom, puts it into OneNote, I can move it between different pages or just keep working on it uh, from within where it is. You know, resize that however I want, so a lot of different functionality there that I can do. And actually, a lot of other programs, when you hold down shift, it'll go ahead and do a proportional resize. One note's the other way around. If you hold down shift, it turns it into resize in goofy manner, not proportional. If you don't use shift, it does proportional by default. So keep that in mind. Don't hold shift. I, I'm used to that. A lot of people are used to that from things like Word and Excel, but in one note, it's reverse. It always does a proportional uh, resize for you. So back into the insert um, toolbar over here. We did a screen clipping. We can insert pictures for ourselves. Find the picture that you want to put in, put it in there, very simple, not going to go over that. Or I can copy pictures in from the web. We already tried that as well. Online pictures, I can go ahead and I can pull pictures uh, from the web for myself. I, I, I think it's going to pull them from, uh, yeah, I can pull them from uh, SharePoint, from Image Search. So a few different places it can search from. My pictures that I have on my OneDrive, since my photos off my phone sync to that, I can pull those in really easily, so you know, could make that a little bit easier for you if you wanted to. Scanned image, um, I don't have a scanner connected right now, so it can't do anything, but I could scan something off my scanner and dump that right into OneNote and start working with it right away. So could be a little bit simpler than doing your native scanner scan and then taking the file, then putting it in. This is a one-click approach to scanning something and putting it right into OneNote. I could put a link in if I wanted to uh, for myself. I could go ahead and, and put a, a text link to a website if I wanted to using that button. Um, this is neat. I'm not gonna go ahead and try this live because it's probably gonna screw up my microphone that's recording what we're saying right now, but this does work. I have tested it. You can record audio. So you can go ahead and, for example, uh, open up OneNote, open up your recording option here, start dictating something, or open this up in a, in a class like this. You can record what I was saying if you had a device of this nature, and you can record what's going on. It'll go ahead, it'll dump in a recording file, and it'll actually say the date and time when it was actually made, and uh, it will go ahead and be saved in there for you, and I can play that back for myself. So again, that's very useful if you're going to things like presentations or conferences, and you want to have that audio context, you can go ahead and put your handwritten notes or type notes, and have the audio recording there, and you can have both aspects uh, to work with. And you can record video as well. Um, be careful with this. You don't want to record video that's too long because video will bloat your OneNote file very heavily and make your storage start getting out of control, but you can record video and insert it here if you really wanted to. I could put a date stamp in for myself very easily. As you can see, I put a date stamp in, or a time stamp, or a date and time stamp. Uh, for yourself so you can you know set different sections to show exactly actually let me scroll down so you see that right there it inserted those date and timestamps for myself um, now that happens by default when I start a new page for, for myself but I'm not making separate areas within a page it doesn't date and timestamp every single one so if I was making something more intricate and I had to know exactly what point I inserted that I might want to go ahead and you know insert that date and timestamp for myself to denote when did I actually put that in there? So that's something about making something you know, that goes on over time. Maybe I have a recipe that I'm collecting from my mom and I'm going ahead and insert, inserting some of my other, my own personal tidbits to it. I can go ahead and timestamp that for myself to know exactly when I inserted that for myself. So neat little functionality 
that I could do uh, very, very easily. Page templates I showed off already. I'll show all your most recent templates that I could uh, use or choose from. If I just click on the button, it'll bring up my full list of all the different templates. And again, there are more templates on the office.com website that I can pull. Uh, and of course, you can insert symbols and equations for yourself as we went over uh, just a short time ago. So even some of the most popular equations are shown uh, right if I click on my little drop down arrow right there for myself. So those are some of the items that I can drop into OneNote pages. So as you can see, a lot of different things we can do with OneNote, right? We can do some of this within Word and Excel, but it's very clumsy. Within OneNote, it's very, I guess I'll say fluid. It feels very natural to dump something in from almost any source, mark it up, move it around, cut it out, format it, highlight it. It's meant to, again, be, so hopefully everyone's starting to see how this is supposed to work like a regular notebook where I can put anything into it and write on it. I can do the exact same things on here, but I have a lot more power. I can search through these items. I can move them. I have them stored now digitally so I don't lose them, and everything auto-saves on the fly. So it is a, a regular notebook on, on steroids here. Um, is there something that someone wants to learn how to insert that I didn't go over just yet? I think I've shown over the whole gamut of <laughs> inserting anything under the sun. But if there's something I'm not covering, please, uh, please let me know. And feel free when you get home, try out some of the insert options uh, so you can you know, become familiar with it for yourself. <coughs> okay. Oh, to-do lists. I didn't even show you how to do to-do lists. So there are some templates that bring an auto to-do list for yourself. If you wanted to put a to-do list, like for example, if I wanted to make a page within my Italian food section that was for, uh, let's say, shopping list for, um, what's today's date, 621. Actually, gotta go shopping later today. So um, I could put a shopping list in for myself so I can go over to the home tab and look at that. There is a actual button where I actually can put in to-do items for myself. So if I go ahead, and insert that and put items into it, it'll go ahead and make a to-do list, and then I could simply check those items off for myself if necessary. So very simple to make a to-do list. I can move that to-do list around within this notebook. That could be things to do on my recipe, that could be things to do on a project, things to do remember on a homework assignment I'm doing. It's up to you what you want to use that to-do list for. If you're planning a wedding with this, obviously a to-do list for what needs to get done for the wedding planning for that. And I can make multiple separate to-do lists. So this is actually very neat because I could add in another to-do list. You know, this one could be uh, you know, for something else and I could put you know, my own title for that. Uh, to-do list for shopping for today. Drop that title right over it and there we go. We've got our clean to-do list for ourselves. So that's a simple way that I can make a to-do so list, a remembrance list, a shopping list, any kind of list that I need to use. Go ahead. So in the title that you put for the shopping for today, is that also a text box? Or yeah. So, okay. Yeah. All right. Text box. I can change it. I can bold it. I could mm -hmm. underline it, make it larger for myself. So again, you just have to watch your spacing a little bit you know, on some of the items. But again, any piece of text you put on here can be moved in any different manner. And text box in here are unlike Word, where, you know, everyone knows that Word works, right? Every Word likes to have everything either lined to the left and likes to have everything in a, you know, has a very uh, tight fashion in terms of how items are controlled and you have to add extra spaces in to give yourself extra space. OneNote says put text wherever you want it, right? Anywhere, anywhere you can be a text box on a OneNote page. You don't have to worry about margins. You know, your pages can be as large as you need them to be, as wide as you need them to be. Just be careful because it might get out of control, you know, on you. So again, it's think of a OneNote page as just a big canvas. It starts off as a regular page, but it can be made as large as you need it to be. Go ahead. So is there a place for page setup if you wanted your page to be eight and a half by 11? Would it yeah, if you, want it, if you wanted it to be a certain size, then I, that's where I would go ahead and use a template where it actually goes ahead and you, where you insert a template that I showed you these page templates, this will actually go ahead and set up a page specifically to be that particular size. So if I go into, click on page templates, if I wanted that to exactly be just a letter size, use a letter size template for yourself. And that will format it exactly to what it needs to be. So when it prints out, it comes out eight and a half by 11, exactly right. And even if you don't remember to do that, 
When you try to print something within OneNote, it will squish something, or last if you want to make it regular size. So it, it is pretty malleable in terms of printing things out. And actually, let's see how it looks. So let's go to Ravioli page. I got a lot of junk on this page. We made our screen clipping. We got our table on here, the pages that I snipped in, some handwriting text. Let's go to File, Print. And by default, I would always do a print preview. Don't just print it without looking at it. Um, but it will show you how I want it to be. So I could go ahead and I can choose um, to scale it for myself in a few different sizes. It'll actually ask me what size do I want to make it. So I can actually choose what printed size it'll be um, right over here uh, for the top for myself. So there we go. It'll show me a preview of how everything will come out. Uh, I can change it to legal size. So I can you know, really get goofy in all the different kinds of options I have. And I can make it landscape if I wanted to. And, See, okay, maybe landscape will come out better, maybe portrait will come out better for myself. So a lot of print options um, that you could do here uh, within, within OneNote. But again, if you're really particular about having something come out on a sheet of paper, because you are formatting it for printing, I would use a template, use a letter size template on there, or a legal, or whatever you're using, and format it like that by default, so you know that whatever goes on that canvas is going to come out on a sheet of paper that's the size you want. Okay? But by default, OneNote says here, it's a canvas, a page is as big as you want it to get. So make sure you do that when you're starting your new page uh, so it's set up properly for yourself. Um, okay, so I just showed off how to do printing within OneNote. I have my little printing button up here I could use, or I can go to File Print. Um, the Mac version has printing capability as well. I believe the tablet version's just got printing capability. Actually, the iPad for sure has printing capability. Um, the only ones that can't print are the mobile phone devices yet, for obvious reasons. Um, but computers, obviously on a, any computer, you can easily print off the online version or the regular desktop version that we're working with uh, right now. Um, okay, so let's go a little bit into sharing. We're almost 11.30. I think we're timing is very good. We'll have a little bit of time for questions at the end. Um, so let's keep going here. So how can I go ahead and share this out now? if I really wanted to share it. So the first things first, this has to be saved into OneDrive. You cannot share a notebook that is not in OneDrive. That's the rule. So if you want it to be shared out with anyone, if this has to be worked on with coworkers or family members, it's got to be saved in OneDrive because that is the tool that allows us to establish those sharing permissions around it. Um, I guess if you wanted to package this, you could go, if you really wanted to do this in a crude manner, you could go file, you could go export, and you could choose to export your notebook as a OneNote package like this, and that could be, that's an encapsulated file that could be sent off to other people, but it's a very clumsy way to do sharing. It's not really a kosher way to share OneNote, OneNote files. Really what this is meant for is it's meant to encapsulate your file if you were gonna go ahead and move between computers. Like if you're gonna transfer from an old computer to a new computer, you would export your OneNote notebooks as a OneNote package, put them on the new computer, and then open that up into your new OneNote instance. But um, this is really not meant, not meant to be emailed between multiple different people. You can do it. I have customers that send me OneNote notebooks sometimes. I ask them not to, but it, it does work. You can do it if you really want to do it in the traditional word way of using file attachments. Um, but sharing is a lot easier. Save the notebook inside your, one, your OneDrive, and if you try to go ahead and share it, it will ask you, you have to save this into OneDrive before you can share it. So it's going to beat you over the head until you put it into, one, into your OneDrive um, in order to go ahead and share this. So I want to go ahead and share my recipe book. This is a recipe book that I want everyone here in class to jump into and help me with and take a look at. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm within my recipe book. I'm going to go to File. I'm going to go to Share. And it's giving me an option right off the bat. I can invite people by email address. For some people, this is easier. For me, I like to use the option that allows me to get a sharing link. Now, I actually went ahead and I made a link here. So, for example, you'll see you have an option to make a view-only link where only people that get this link can go ahead and view the file. And you can actually mix and match. So, if some people need viewing access only and some need editing access into my notebook, I can mix and match who gets what. I can give out my viewing link to those that need only view access, and I can make an editing link to those that want to actually be able to work within the file with me. So... When I share this out, people can open it up on their tablet within the OneNote on the, on the tablet interface. They can open it up on their computer as well. Um, we're going to actually work with work in this 
uh, in the manner of using the OneNote online version. So I'm going to show everyone how the online product looks within a web browser, and we're going to do this together right now, actually. So let me go ahead, and I'm going to copy my editing link. I'm going to make this a short link, because this is way too hard for anyone to type in. So let's go to goo.gl. Let's shorten this link for ourselves. And let's shorten that to a very simple... All right, so let's do this. Everyone open up your web browser, if it's not open already. And let's go to the address I have up on the screen here, right in the middle of the screen. Doesn't matter what browser you go in, I would probably say Firefox might be your fastest bet on these computers, uh, but it's up to you. So in your web browser, let's go ahead and type in goo.gl forward slash T-H-T duh, D-U-H. How convenient. You're hungry? Oh, because you got my pierogi up on the screen there. See, there you go. I'll give everyone a moment or so to get into it, and then I'll bring up the web version on my side, and I'll show everyone how the web version works and how others can work with you on your window notebooks. Or you can just use the online version and work on your own notebooks. Um, Perfect, yeah. That's exactly what I want to show up. So actually, let me bring up now how it looks on the web browser. Does anyone else need this address? Is everyone into it okay? Uh, does everyone want you to do it? I'm not. You're not into it? Ruth will help you out really quickly. Here, let's type in. Just go. So goo.gl. It's asking for the URL shortener. You probably forgot the text after the slash. <clears throat> no, it's not. No, no. No, we. Three. Um, it's forward slash. Sorry. Right. Yeah. Now we've got to script. We've got to do all kinds of stuff here. <laughs> Now it asks for a, um, we got to catch it. Oh my goodness. Put up I can't quite fire. see it, so you'll have to see what you can see. Uh, Did anyone else get that? Oh, actually, let me, I see what, I see what happened here. We had a, we have a, we have a, we had a uh, oh, question mark. Oh, another there. one in there the we go. Now it's, now, now this is now what it's supposed right. to look like. One note online. Okay, now you can Thank follow you. along. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so simple as that. So you can do that. You can make a link for someone, email it to them, and tell them, hey, go in my notebook. Let's work on this recipe book together. Let's work on this wedding planning together. Whatever we got to do uh, together within here. So let me show the web interface now. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to put it into web browser here. So this is OneNote Online. Again, this is a stripped down version of OneNote, and there are versions of Word and Excel and all the different apps, and I'm not going to go over all these. I went over these in my OneDrive class two months ago. Watch my class that we did then to learn how to use the other aspects. Um, but we're using the OneNote version right now, and this works within any web browser. This is, go ahead.
click there, edit a browser. I can go through all the different pages here, and it shows me all my different sections here. And I can view the whole, everything I put in, everything that was in my, on my computer version is now here as well. And I can work on it, and we can move things around and make changes here. So again, all the different things we could do, and we can bring up our editing ribbon up here. Now you can see it doesn't have as many features as our Windows version. You can't, all those cool insert items that doesn't have as much here, but a, 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 a fairly workable version of OneNote, we can definitely use right within the web browser here for ourselves. And as you can see, we're working all our different pages here, and all this should be updating on the fly. Um, and let's actually see if we can see this. Is anyone else in the ravioli page on Italian foods? No, I'm not right, you go into there to so see yeah. if you can start seeing this, like this stuff come up for your, on your end. I want to make sure this is working. <laughs> It should be coming through. Autosave works in the web browser too, so same thing that we had in the Windows version. Oh, I see. Okay. Is it coming up? No. All I have is the, the script, the, script. the handwritten script. Mm. We don't have any typing. No. Okay, so it might be a little bit delayed. Okay. Might be a little bit delayed, but it should be should be coming through here. Let's see how it looks in my. Now, would we have to put edit again? Oh, my Windows version just came up. It should be coming up for you guys. Make sure you hit that button that's an edited web browser. You might be not seeing it because you're not in the... Uh, well, I did it when we were on the Italian, on the Polish page, but not on the Italian page. I don't see that option. No, there's not an option now for... I have to and you only have to do it once. Oh, once okay. you go into editing mode, you're in editing mode. Okay, so I edit the title and this on mine, but not on yours. On which one? On Ravioli? Ravioli. Hmm. Yeah. Did you see the change? Yeah. You no, did? it just came in. Just okay, came in. yeah, so it's a little bit delayed. It's a little bit delayed sometimes um, between the between the editions, um, but as I showed, I put this in here on the web, and I went back to my desktop, and it came in right over there for myself. Okay, so it does work between the different editions. It might be a little bit slower based on internet speed, um, maybe a little bit delayed, but it should come through. Oh, that had the change you put in. Yes. All right, so it did work. So we just had about you know 20, 30 second delay on it, but again, we are editing in near real time with, with one another, everyone's within the same notebook, and we're all working on it, at editing it. So I think that's pretty neat. So that's a live demo of how you can work on any notebook with anyone, and you control whether or not sharing is turned on. If I go back into my sharing area and turn that link off, as soon as you refresh the page, you'll be locked out of this notebook. So I can give access and take away access. That's another aspect of why using the built-in sharing is much better than packaging as a OneNote package, is because I can give access and take it away on the flick of a finger, as opposed to giving it out as an attachment, I can never take that back. This I can take back at any time. So that's the thing that you want to remember with using sharing within, uh, within OneNote for ourselves. Um, and what you're seeing in the, in the web interface, this toolbar and everything, this should look similar. I've seen people on iPad tablets get into this interface. Uh, it should look similar in almost every single device that you use um, as long as you're within a web browser. That, that's the nice part about it is that the familiarity and the similarity between the interface and the functions travel no matter what device you're on. That's especially true for the, for the web interface version that we're working on within right now. Now again, you lose some of the bells and whistles. You don't get all the full functionality, but for something that you need to access on a library computer, if you're coming to the library and editing your shopping list or a recipe for yourself, you could make all the edits you needed to do and then work on your full-blown version when you got home for yourself. So, very powerful uh, aspect in, in, in how that works. If I was signed into my OneDrive, I would have access to all my different notebooks here. If I clicked on this and I went over here and I clicked on notebooks, that's where I could have ac access to all my notebooks that I have. So all my class notebooks that I was showing, if I was logged in, I would have access to all those by hitting the notebooks button up here. So I kind of like how the web interface handles the notebook section and goes ahead and closes out of it as soon as I'm done working on it and then opens it back up and I want to go see all my pages again. So again, as we can see, sections and, and page concept does travel, it's just that it works a little bit differently than you know pages on the right hand side and sections at the top over here. Um, the concept's the same, it's just in a little different place uh, for ourselves. Keep in mind that sharing with OneNote is considered private. There's nothing shared out. So even though you put something in your OneDrive, it is not shared with anyone unless you go ahead and you turn sharing on. So unless you email out to people with their email address or you make a sharing link, there's nothing shared 
unless you go ahead and force it to do so. So remember that aspect. Just because it's in your cloud account does not mean that other people can get access to it. The only way that would hold true is if someone had your password to your OneDrive account. So keep your password secure just like anything else, like your bank account, like your email account, but as long as no one else has access to your account, this is considered private to you unless you make these sharing links or you're inviting people via email address. Um, there's also an option where you could share this with a meeting for yourself. Um, I think you might need uh, business functionality from Office to do that, but it is an option if you ever wanted to. Uh, and I can move the notebook as well. If I wanted to move a notebook uh, to somewhere else, I could do that uh, as well for myself. Um, so we tried the web browser version uh, together just now. Um, now I want to show off two aspects on the mobile side, okay? So this is something that I usually can't show off to people. I always talk in hypotheticals. Let's actually see this in action here. Um, so let's do this. Let me bring up my da, da, da. Okay. No, no, I'm gonna be showing my mobile phone on the screen here. You don't need to do anything. Okay, let me disconnect my keyboard here. You can, follow, you can install OneDrive on your phone if you want to give it a quick run, but what I'm showing off on my phone is going to be very similar to what you would see on your phone. The OneDrive app is very similar across the mobile phones. Okay. Boom, there we go. So there's my mobile phone. So this is a neat little tool called Project My Screen. It's just for Windows Phone, so I can show everyone uh, how this looks. So, um, so let's go ahead and I'm going to go into the OneDrive on here and I'm going to show you. Now I've been talking about how this travels across all the different devices. Um, let's go ahead and I'm going to go into OneDrive right on my phone here. There we go. I got my OneNote on here. I got my cat showing up there. All right. So here we go. I have all my different. Now again, you're going to have to sign in to your OneDrive account to be able to do this. If you want to just keep your OneDrive notebook on your computer only and not use it on your mobile device, this is not going to be very helpful. You have to be signed into OneDrive. You have to put your OneDrive, OneNote notebook into OneDrive in order to be able to get it on your phone because it's got to sync. It can't, you can't just you know, have the file traveling around over a thumb drive or something like that. So this is where OneDrive really has to be used to be able to use this. Um, but I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to sync my notebooks right now. My recipe book is showing up. My class notebooks are showing up on here. So if I go into my recipe book, let's see, it should go ahead and sync up my other section here, the Italian section we just made. Polish cooking is syncing up. Still syncing. There we go. Italian foods just came in. So I'm in my recipe book that we were working with in. Let's go into Polish cooking on here. And someone made a uh, how to make yummy in my tummy page. And here is a sheet on spaghetti. I don't, have, I don't think we had anything else on here. Let's go to a page that had something a little bit more on there. Let's see what someone put on here. Nothing much. Yeah, that was oh. down away. Okay. I think down and up, right? Oh. There we go. Someone did put something on there. So I can go ahead and I have access, as you can see, into all my different items. So, you know, again, this becomes useful because if I'm working something with something on my on my computer, I could keep working on it on my phone, especially for things like, you know, very useful scenario like to-do lists and task lists for myself. So where's that task list? I think that was in our Italian section. Let's go into Italian. Uh, was that ravioli for tonight? I think I had my list in here. I wonder if I might have. You can see where getting this too big becomes a little unwieldy sometimes. But even if I just wanted to reference this and find all the things that I was using as a recipe, I could open this up and, you know, here's my shopping list. Here's all the items I need to get for, for dinner tonight for myself. Let's go back. Um, to-do list. Okay, so it looks like we got a to-do list. Did someone else put this in? Well, this is maybe one of the ones I put in over here for myself. So, again, if I put text on there, I could go ahead and I could go ahead and change up my tasks for myself and I can check those items off. So if that was a shopping list for myself, you know, I could easily check off what I was getting done, done in terms of shopping. So for a lot of people, I think this is a very practical way to be able to 
plan a shopping list for yourself and, and get it on the go and check mark it as soon as you're done. You know, perhaps it'll help some of us uh, not overspend at the grocery store as we tend to do. Um, so let's go back over here and see what else we have. There's our shopping list. There's another list that we made for ourselves um, very simply. So, you know, very easy way that I can go in and edit that for myself. And my entire notebook, all my notebooks are accessible within here. So it's not just my recipe book that's accessible. I can go back. I can open up my, my Derek notebook file. I can go back into my class notes if I wanted to. I'm going to hear for myself and everything I did on the computer is, you know, fully accessible within my OneNote um, on my phone. And I can go ahead and I can search for items as well. Let's see if I can do a search for ravioli. There we go. Found ravioli and I don't know if it has the full contextual search in terms of searching within pictures on the mobile side. It's a little bit more limited. But in terms of searching my, my page titles and my section titles that I have for myself, let's try typing in shopping. There we go. Two, two different shopping, more shopping stuff, all kinds of shopping stuff that I had on there for myself. So it's a very easy way to use that. So again, as you can see, the, 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 the interface on the mobile phone, a little bit more limited. Again, we don't have much screen real estate, but I can work on things. I can edit them in a simple manner. I can check off my shopping list or my to-do list or my or any kind of list for myself. Uh, and I can even add new pages if I wanted to. Say I wanted to add something new in my Italian food section, click on plus, put a title in for it. And off I go. And I can start making this on the fly for myself. And as soon as I go back to my computer, let me see. I think the mouse should be plugged in here. But this should be showing up in my notebook on my computer site as well for me. Uh, and if you guys are in the online browser interface, you should be able to see this uh, coming in for yourself. Um, and I can go ahead and insert audio. I can insert a picture from within here. I can put a to-do list right in uh, for myself right within here. Uh, so I can do a lot of that same functionality for myself uh, very, very simply. I can put number lists in. I can do formatting within here for myself. So a lot of different functionality. <coughs> Now there's a neat app for iPhones and for the uh, Windows Phone devices that you can use. That's called Office Lens. This is a new app that just came out a few months ago from Microsoft that you can download and it's actually on my full list over here. Uh, Office Lens, here we go. So Office Lens is actually a cool tool you can use and this is gonna be coming out for Android very soon as far as I know. This will go ahead and this is a simple way. So say for example, uh, I went to some cooking class and this was actually a recipe list for myself. And I wanted to go ahead and put this into OneNote really quickly, right? This is kind of hard to put into OneNote, but if I can grab it in a picture for myself and format it right, I can easily put that into OneNote then. So let's go ahead and do this. I can go into Office Lens. I can change my type into document so I can take a nice picture, it'll format it from a whiteboard or a regular photo. For the, in this case, we're taking a document. So I'll show you how this works. I'll put it in a document mode. I'll go ahead and I'll start doing my photo. I gotta get my cord out of the way here. Okay. Let's take a look at this Be Okay. Take my picture. You see how it's framing my document? Working on it, and hopefully, there we go. Look at that. It took a picture that I made on an angle, it cropped it, and now I can go ahead and I can send this straight to OneNote for myself. So I could do save, and I can go ahead and change the title. It's gonna go ahead and put it into a new page for me. Um, and as soon as I go ahead and do that, transferring photo, now I can go ahead and I can open that up for myself and now it's within OneNote I don't know, again I quickly opened it on my mobile phone but now this is a page right within my quick notes area that I can go ahead I can even access this on my computer very easily so very simple way now since it's within OneNote of course I can mark it up I can highlight things on this picture I can go on my computer make the text searchable uh, now the page is a little bit wavy so may not come out 100%, but if you take a clean shot of a page when it's sitting directly down on a table, um, this should come out pretty well. I have tested it and it, make, it does make it searchable and it is easy to work with at that point. So 
a very simple way to take something or a billboard or something that I want to capture and keep it for markup purposes or for uh, as a remembrance instead of just making us a, a, a regular picture out of it, now I can actually format it and work with it within OneNote for myself. Uh, maybe it was a recipe up at a billboard within a grocery store that I wanted to grab. So, you know, very easy to go ahead and work with it for myself. So, that's Office Lens. So, iPhone people and Windows Phone people, you can grab that free right off your app store, and that is a completely free app that you can use to enhance your, your OneNote mobile experience uh, for yourself. Um, so, that's the that's the mobile side of it. Um, I guess, does anyone have any questions? Yes, go ahead. Okay, you said that um, for the mobile thing that you have to be signed into Drive OneDrive. Yes. But is that like to use your iPad you have to be signed in or you have to leave it signed in on your computer when you're somewhere else? Yeah. You have to do it in both places, right? You have to sign in on your source computer, right? To save your notebook, start your notebook in there. Get saved into your OneDrive, and then you sign in in your mobile device, or your iPad, or your Mac, or again, it can be on any number of devices that you have. When you sign in, that creates the link between all the devices. So OneDrive stores it, and then all the devices are just pulling from it and editing the same notebook files. Okay, so like I have to leave my OneDrive signed in at home when I go to a meeting to, to use the You iPad. don't have to leave it signed in. You can sign in, save the notebook, close out of OneNote, um, close out of OneNote for yourself, and it'll be then saved in OneDrive. You don't have to even have the computer on at that point. As long as the link is established and OneNote is allowed to save the notebook file in OneDrive, it's there and it's accessible. Okay. So then Near then instantaneously. So then at the meeting you use the iPad and it saves there? And Correct. Then it saves. Okay. Correct. Thank you. Yeah. We're using OneDrive as that hub instead of a, like a flash drive, instead of our local hard drive. It's just a different place. It's a different hub to save the files into, but it's a, it's a nice hub because it allows us to access it across all the devices that we have. That's what makes it so nice. So if you're on the Mac version, you can go into File, sign into OneDrive, and you have access to all the notebooks without having to manage thumb drives or external hard drives. It's just there. That's what I like to say. It's, it's just there. You can work on it, edit it, and it goes across your other devices at that point. Okay. And to my mobile phone. And my other question go ahead. is, is there a separate download for each Yes. There's a different version for every single device. So your phone has a different app store. You get it from that um, for yourself. Um, your uh, um, the iPad, obviously, you go through the, uh, the, the uh, what's it called, the app store on the iPad to grab that version. Um, there are, and for the Mac, obviously, you would go and grab the regular download version. That's a traditional Mac application for yourself. Thank you. So, yes, there's a different version for every device. If you don't want to deal with the editions aspect or the versions aspect, you can just use the online version, right? The browser looks the same no matter what device you're on. So you could do it that way, but you do lose out on some of the bells and whistles. As I showed, there's a lot more options, a lot more insert options you can use on the full-blown versions than the web version because the web browser limits you to what you can pull from your local computer. So, but again, the way I do it is if I'm working on something with someone, I use the full-blown version and I make a sharing link and I ask others to join in or they can even take that link and, and log in through their regular OneNote program using that link as well for themselves. Um, so there are a lot of different options for how you can work with file OneNote notebooks and how others can join in with you. A lot of different flexibility there when it comes to working with uh, working with others. So, so if, you, if you send in the email, the sharing link, then does that person that opens the link automatically have editing? It depends on what kind of link you made. So remember when I went into the file tab and I went into share, there are two different kind of links I can make, a view only link and an editing link. View only means all they can do is view it. They can't touch it. Editing gives them the ability to do what you guys were doing with me just a little bit earlier. Everyone can jump in and have some fun with it at that point. So that's how you control who can work on it, who can't work on it. Or you turn off all the links if you don't want anyone to have access into it, disable, disable, and then it's just private back to you only at that point. So again, very easy to give out access, take the access back when you're all done. So can the person that received it first, can they save it um, for themselves? If it's shared out in this manner, they cannot save it to their computer. That's part of the way that the sharing is built in. It's not meant to be 
transplanted into someone else's oh, okay. computer. It's meant to be okay. shared out and then access taken away when, the, when, the, when that person doesn't want to share any longer. Okay. If you wanted to do more of a transplant like that, you probably would want to do that OneNote export, export it as a OneNote package, and then give someone that file dump to let it put it on their computer. But again, that's not the most kosher way to, to share files. You really want to do it in this manner where you're sharing out the access and then someone uses the link to get into it. If you want someone to be able to use the full program, like on the Mac, you want to share between you on the Windows full program and you and someone else on the Mac version to be able to use the full edition of it, you would do a file share and you would just use the invite people over an email option. And you'd have to email, invite their OneDrive email address. This is where the OneDrive email comes into play. So if they told you what their OneDrive account email was, you would share it out to there with, uh, with them right from here. You choose if it's going to be edit rights or view only rights. And then they can easily go into their OneNote program and it shows up as a shared notebook from someone else. So you can do it in that manner as well for yourself. But again, I would only use the email invite option if you know the person has OneDrive and you know the person has the full blown version of OneNote on their computer. If they don't and you question and it's questionable, use the get a sharing link. You can easily email out the link then that, that is made from within here and give someone web browser access and then you don't have to worry whether they have it installed or it's working. If they want web browser and they have email, they can then access that one on notebook with, uh, with you. So that's OneNote. Any other final questions about what you can do with this or how it works? Again, you can take a look at some of those use case scenarios I put on the back over here. By all means, that's kind of an exhaustive list. Uh, there are people that do all kinds of things with OneNote these days. So uh, it's very, very powerful. It can do lots of different things. It can be used as a publishing program, as a replacement for Word, as a digital notebook, as a drawing notebook. Um, it's really up to you and what you want to leverage it for uh, and for your needs. And again, just um, you know, keep in mind the concept. The biggest thing is to remember the concept of notebooks and how they're divided into sections and how they're divided further into pages. As long as you get that concept down, I think the whole notion of how OneNote works starts to become a little bit easier to, to understand for people. I put some resources on the back of the agenda. Um, there are three places that I think are pretty good resources that I've used in the past. The official OneNote blog from Microsoft, they have all kinds of great articles that they put up about how other people are using OneNote. Some of the ideas I got were actually from the OneNote blog, um, from, from use cases and, you know, happening in the wild. Uh, Lynda.com actually, Lynda.com is a great resource I talked about many times before. Very detailed, in-depth training videos. Yes? There you go. So actually, I put on here that you have free access to all the basics videos, all the basics about the interface and all that. But if Niles Library has access, you have access to all 20 or 30 videos that they have. Step-by-step -step tutorials on how to do anything within OneNote. And I think they have version 2010 and 2013 up on their, on their website. So you can go into much more detail than what we did here today uh, in this class. Uh, and there's also a Getting Started Center for Microsoft at the GU.gl link that I put on the on the back of the agenda, and that includes um, some other get, you know, basic information, some getting started videos, things of that nature. But if you were here for the class today, I think you got a much better introduction to OneNote than those videos are going to provide you. Um, okay. So again, this is going to be up on our YouTube channel uh, for anyone that is interested in rewatching it. I'm going to share out the link with Ruth as usual, so that can be sent out to everyone. Uh, and I hope to have this up by the end of the weekend, so you can even go on the YouTube channel and view it uh, immediately as soon as I get it posted um, for us. Um, so if, if no one has any further questions about, oh, we do have another question. So if I have a, a document <coughs> or a photo that I already have on my computer, can yep. I transfer it over to OneNote? Of course. Yeah. If you had a document or photo you wanted to put in, I would just go into the Insert tab, and you could insert that as a file attachment for yourself. And you can put that in, uh, and it will simply go in as a picture or a file. Yeah. Any, digi any digital file you have on your computer, as long as it's a traditional office file format or a photo file of some sort, or even audio files, you can dump all that into OneNote. Yeah, it's meant to be a dumping around of almost anything you want to use within it. So hopefully I got that point across with everything we've been doing with putting into OneNote. You can put anything into it. It's much more than a paper notebook.
Any other final questions? Otherwise, we're going to go to uh, raffle off our one single goodie bag that we have for the day. All right, I guess I'll, I'll do the... Uh, I'll do the honors here. I'm gonna stop the recording so we don't get the person's name on the uh, recording for today. Um, if anyone has left any final questions after we're through uh, with the raffle, come up to talk with me. I'll be more than glad to help you out with any more personal questions that you may have, okay?